220 centimeters would be the total distance that this lizard had traveled. Let's go look at um, part B. In the Indy 500 car, uh, Indy 500, a car travels a two travels a 200 laps around a 2.5 circular path to complete 500 mile race. If each car finishes the race back at the starting line, what is the displacement of each car that finishes the race? The displacement would be zero miles. I'm going to use miles because that's the distance that they gave us in. No, I don't like to use miles, but I'm going to use it anyways. Okay, let's keep going. Next part. It says here, displacement can be positive or negative. Displacement also includes a description of the direction. Because displacement is a vector. So since displacement is a vector, it means it has direction of motion. Which equals that it is a vector. A vector is a quantity with a, remember that word, magnitude. For an example, 64 uh, meters per second and a direction, which would be south. Um, now go back and maybe you didn't notice, hopefully we've all seen the cartoon Despicable Me. Um, on Despicable Me, that um, villain that they have, um, his name is Vector, the villain. Go back and rewatch that video clip. Maybe now it makes a little sense when you watch it. There's a lot of cartoon stuff that has physics in it, physics words that we may not know at the time, but now when you watch it, you're going to realize it. So when he introduces himself, he says he has magnitude and direction. Vector. The next one here says here though in 1D or we call it one dimensional motion there are only two directions in which an object's going to move either it's going to move right and left or it's going to move up and down we are not going to move right and up yet we will we're not going to move left and down yet but we will Okay, now do you remember graph, um, graph, do you remember math class whenever you did graphing? You had your quadrants, you remember? You had a quadrant here, a quadrant here, a quadrant here, and a quadrant here. Oh man, we're going back to math. Absolutely, when you're on the x-axis over here or the y-axis, here's your home or your starting position. If you moved this direction on the x-axis, do we remember what? That was to the right, that was a positive value. If you started from home and you moved this way on the x, that was a negative value to the left. Back at the graph, at the home position, if you moved up, that was a positive value. And if you moved down, that was a negative value. Same thing in physics. We use our graphs and our quadrants and the direction just like we, you did in math class. Okay, let's keep going. It says here that displacement can also be in two dimensions, like I said, to the right and up. But that's not until the next unit, and we are going to get to that. Hopefully, um, you remember that. You did that in maybe in math class or in geometry, Sokotoa, right? That's what we're going to go back and we're going to do those angles again, but that's not until next unit. Let's go to the next word, velocity. The next vocabulary word, the next equation. It says here, the definition for average velocity is an object's displacement over a period of time in which the displacement occurs. Now I'm going to pause for a moment. Velocity equals the displacement over time. Now we just talked about displacement and we said that displacement is a, right here, here's the word, vector. And if velocity's equation has displacement in it and displacement is a vector, then that means that velocity is a vector too. So when you look at your equations 
if part of the equation has a vector quantity in it, then that whole equation is going to be a vector as well. Let's go ahead and write down the next equation. Velocity equals displacement over time. Now I'm going to pause for a moment, change it a little bit, because some of us are going to get a little bit like fluttered, I guess you can say. We say that velocity is displacement over time. Displacement is really like that distance that the object traveled, but with the direction with it. So velocity is also, I'm going to put right here, or distance over time as well. Okay, and the abbreviation for it is a lowercase v equals a lowercase d over a lowercase t. Okay, velocity is distance over time. Now, I hope you had an amazing teacher before me and your teacher taught you the triangle. Some teachers teach it as a circle. I'm going to talk about the triangle all school year. We are going to be doing algebra, pre-cal, geometry. We've got all of those maths that you've used in the past and that you've learned, and we're going to put them all in time into what we have word problems in physics. Okay, not, as it just, not only is it just math, but it's word problem math. And sometimes it just becomes a lot and it becomes overwhelming. Some of you are amazing in math. Some of you may struggle a little bit. So to help us, um, not just those people who are super strong, but to help the strugglers too. I like to use shortcuts, and a triangle is a shortcut. Now, you might be awesome in math, and I understand, but some of the math becomes very lengthy, and because of that, the triangle actually helps shortcut some of your steps. So, if you do not like my triangle, and you prefer to algebraically solve for it, well, then do what you like and what is familiar to you. But if you prefer to shortcut it, then the triangle is one way to do that. Now, I'm going to start from the beginning because I do not know who and who was not taught the triangle method. But over here, when it comes to my triangle, this line right here represents division. And this line right here represents multiplication. Now, every time I need to put uh, an equation into the triangle, and almost every physics equation will work, almost. You cover up the equal part, so cover that part up. I'm looking at this equation. Cover up the equal part. What do I have left over? D over T. D is at the top of the division, so my D has to go up here at the top. It has to. The T is at the bottom of the division, so it can go anywhere down here. T. Move the equals, move your pen. What do you have left? The V. Now, you can algebraically solve for one of your unknowns, or if you plug it into the triangle, for an example, what if I'm looking for the time? Cover the T up. T equals D over V. What if I'm looking for distance or displacement? Cover it up. Distance or displacement equals times time velocity. If I'm looking for velocity, velocity is d over t. You can now quickly rearrange it from the triangle without having to algebraically solve it. But you are more than algebraically welcome to solve it. What I want to tell you, though, is that you must print out your notes. You must, from here on out, print out all your homeworks, print out all your labs. It must all be printed because I do need to see your math and your steps. That's awesome if you did do it a different route. Go ahead, take it your route, but show me your steps. You will not, you will not get full credit if you do not show me your steps, okay? Let's keep going. We've got a math problem. And again, our math problems in physics are going to be the majority of the time as word problems. So let's look at this word problem. You take a car trip to a friend's house that is 370 kilometers to the west. Whoa, I'm gonna pause, they gave me west. That is a direction. So this number is a distance or a displacement? It is a displacement. Distance is a scalar without direction. Displacement has direction. 
not a problem, along a straight highway. You leave your house at 10 a.m. You arrive to your friend's house at 3 p.m. What is your displacement, the time it took for you to travel, and the average velocity of the trip? Question mark, what is the D, lowercase d, question mark, what is the t, question mark, what is the v? This right here is my distance, and this is going to be my t sub i, my initial time, and this is going to be my t sub f, my final time, okay? I like to solve my equations by going ahead to make sure that I jot down, underline, and I know what I have. Here's what I have. The distance and I have the two times. Well, I need only one time, because look, I need one time. That's it. Um, some of the equation, you might see a delta T over here, which is fine. Sometimes you'll see a delta D over delta T, which is also okay. In this case, obviously, we need to find the delta or the change in the time. My equation for velocity equals D over T. Do I have the D? I do. 370 kilometers. Do I have the T? I actually do. Final minus my initial. Started off at 3 p.m. and I ended, sorry, ended up at 3 p.m. Starting off at 10 a.m. So how much time difference or change to occur? So 10 to 11 to 12 to 1 to 2 to 3. So that is how much time? 5 hours. So... 370 kilometers divided by five hours. Look at the units. Those units cannot cancel each other out, right? Like an algebra class. So we need to keep them both, okay? No, we don't like hours. We prefer seconds, but that's what was given to us. So we're gonna leave it as is. My answer equals blank kilometers per hour west. And there goes my answer. The full answer, to be correct, must have your number value, which you solved. And this is why I said that you need to have your calculator with you, because I'm not going to solve the actual number. So I'm going to leave that stuff for you. Okay? I'm going to set you up, but I'm not going to solve. If you don't solve, you lose the points on the notes. You have to have an SI unit behind every number in physics. Kilometers per hour, they can't cancel out. And because they gave us direction, we keep the direction. They even told us they used the word velocity. But we already knew because of the direction that this was going to be a vector quantity. And for vector quantities, we keep the direction to go along with it. Let's keep going. Next part. It says here, during a race on level ground, Andrea runs with an average velocity of lowercase v, that's the velocity number, to the east, the direction. It's a vector. They gave us a direction. How far is Andrea um, displaced from her starting point? In 137 seconds, t. How far, question mark, distance? Okay? So, I'm looking for the distance. They gave me the t of 137 seconds, and they gave me the velocity of 6.02 meters per second. Okay? Let's go ahead and solve for this. You have two ways. You can, number one, algebraically solve for it, and that would be v equals d over t. So, 6.02 meters per second equals my unknown distance over 137 seconds, right? You need to get distance by itself. So to do that, if I times this side by 137 seconds, that cancels. Then times this side by 137 seconds. Those seconds, do you see? This one's at the top. This one's at the bottom. This cancels and this cancels. Now you're left over with multiplying those and with the SI unit of a meter. Or we can use my triangle. What am I looking for? Distance or displacement. Cover it up. Write it down. D 
D equals, because that's what I'm looking for. Cover it up. What's it say on my triangle? T times V. Or 137 seconds times 6.02 meters per second. And again, you can see that those seconds cancel each other out. You're going to do the same thing. Do you see how this? I went straight to that step without having to do the algebra. Your choice, however you want to. Hopefully you got the answer of 824.74 meters east. There you go. And that's how you solve that answer as well. I solved it for you this time. Look at that. So nice of me. Turn the page. Next page over here is velocity. Velocity, it says. Oops, let's move this out the way. Velocity is a vector. And vectors are measurements that include, don't forget, magnitude, we're going to say that word a lot, and direction. Vectors can be ooh, added together. Looks like my notes are missing a little bit of stuff. That's okay. Let's go ahead and write it in. Add it together if in the same direction. And they could be subtracted if in opposite directions. So vectors, they can be added and subtracted depending on the direction that they are. If they're in the same direction, add those numbers together. Pretty easy. If they're in opposite direction, meaning up and down or right and left, then you subtract it. If they are up and to the right, now we're going to Pythagorean or Sokotoa it. But we're not there yet. We're still on the basic physics. Okay, so for an example, if, a, if I row a canoe at the speed of two miles an hour against, what does that word against mean? Opposite, a current that is going one mile an hour, then my velocity is going to be two take away one equals one mile an hour upstream. If I turn around and row the canoe with, what does that word mean? Same direction, a speed of two miles an hour with the current that is going one mile an hour, two plus one equals three miles an hour downstream. Okay, so pretty easy as that. Not hard, not difficult. Again, they must be up, down, or right, left. We are not doing down and to the left yet. Not yet, we will. The next part, we have another equation we're about to come to. It is speed. It says here, define speed or the definition. Speed is the distance. Oh, they used the word distance. They did not use the word displacement. An object travels in a certain amount of time. Speed is a magnitude of how fast an object's moving. Speed is a scalar for some of those who was asking or were wondering. So let me go ahead and put that over here. Speed is a scalar. By the time the school year is over, you're going to have a big list of vectors and scalars. Please know them. Um, if it feels like you have so much in your brain right now going on and you're like, I just don't know if I can memorize all of them, why don't you have a side piece of paper for physics class and label it vector and scalar. And go ahead and start with your list, right? We can say displacement. We can say distance, t 
time. I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to put words that we've already used. Um, what else? Mm, velocity. How about velocity? Mm, that would be it at this moment, I think. But here's the here's an idea of what you you could do. I give this to students all the time. This is a really easy question on the quizzes and tests throughout the school year. Okay, they may ask you if centripetal acceleration is going to be a vector or scalar quantity. I mean, if you have a list that you've been making out, that's going to be pretty easy to go back and take a quick glance at that list, right, that you've been making the all school year. So I'm throwing that out there, just a suggestion. So let's go ahead and look at the equation before I go any further. For speed, speed's equation is distance over time, or s, lowercase s, equals lowercase d over lowercase t. Now, let me also tell you that you might see it this way. You might see an x in the place of distance. The same thing, let me go back this way. Over here, you might see v equals x over t. I know in math class, I think X is kind of like what you're solving or your unknown. For us in physics, the letter X actually means position, displacement, or distance. And over here, the same thing. You might see it as this way. You might see delta lowercase d equals d sub f minus d sub i. Okay? So... A, or kind of how you saw it over here. If you look right here, that's a Y sub I. The Y is the same thing as an X. It's just telling me that it's in the up and down position versus the side to side on a graph. That was it. So all of those are really good, valuable, good, useful letters that can be used. Okay, let's keep going. Normally this would be like three full class periods. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to cram it into the videos now. Please watch them if you don't want to. Not a problem. I will go through the notes in class, but I don't want you to get confused or lost because you never watched them and you never did the notes to the end. Don't wait till the last minute to do your notes. Lowercase s stands for speed, which is going to be in meters per second. It could be kilometers per hour. It could be miles per hour. All of those are good SI units. Whatever they give you is the units you keep. Don't just make up your own. Lowercase d stands for distance. It also stands for displacement or position. And it can be a M meters, kilometers, miles. Let me stop for a moment because I have a lot of students that just put an lowercase m. A lowercase m is meters. If you're trying to say miles and you're trying to shortcut or abbreviate it, it is M-I-L. M-I-L. Okay? And then T stands for time, which is, and that's a lowercase because capital T stands for something else. Seconds, hours, minutes, all of those are good. Again, though, we don't like to use minutes, but if that's what's given to us, then let's keep it. Why make our life more difficult? Alrighty, let's keep going. Speed and velocity. Speed and velocity are used interchangeable. In everyday language. But in physics, though, there is an important distinction or difference between the two. Speed is a scalar and it describes only how fast an object is traveling but velocity is a vector and it includes both magnitude and direction. 
It tells you not only how fast an object is traveling, but it also tells you the direction it's going. Now, direction could be north, south, east, west, or it could be going forward, backwards, to the right, to the left. Uh, we can also use direction of home to school to the park. They're giving us a direction. They're telling us that they're going to College of the Mainland. That's a direction to College of the Mainland. So you may not always, what I'm trying to say, you may not always get the nice, pretty north, south, east, and west that you prefer. Sometimes they just may be saying that a fish is swimming. And a fish is swimming. The only thing that I know is that it's swimming forward. And that's the direction that I can give because that's all I know is that it's swimming. Okay. Let's go ahead and look at a couple of practice problems over here. So the car is traveling at a constant 30 meters per second west. Because it's west, I know that this is velocity for 2.7 hours. T. How far will the car travel during this time? How far? Question mark distance. So hopefully some of us are like, you know what? This is not bad. It's pretty easy. Absolutely, I agree with you. This is going to be some kind of velocity equation, right? Velocity equals d over t. That's my formula I'm going to use. Okay, let's go ahead and show our work. So on here, I'm going to, because this is me and I love the triangle, d, t, v. I'm looking for d, so I'm going to come over here and circle it. d equals v times t. There we go. And now go ahead and solve it. d equals v times t. We'll come back to this problem when we see each other again. Were you given a speed or a velocity problem? Velocity. How do I know? Because of direction. Okay, please solve this problem so that way we can talk about it later. Next part, Marcos is on the DHS track team. He can run 440 meters in 1 minute and 20 seconds. Distance, T for time. How fast, question mark, do they give us uh, any kind of directions? No, I'm going to call it speed. How fast, and they use the words fast too, is he moving in meters per second? So speed equals D over T. I'm actually looking for speed so I don't have to rearrange the equation. Go ahead and put the distance over the time. And solve for your answer. What kind of problem did you get? It was a speed problem. How can you tell? Because no direction. Also, they just wanted to know how fast. Okay, so let's go ahead. Hopefully, you are looking at that problem too, and we can kind of take a glance at that together. Here are some problems that I would prefer to work with you in class. We're not with each other in class, that's okay, but we can still go ahead and try them and then do them when we see each other in our Teams meeting. Turn the page. So in the Teams meeting, be prepared when I just start calling y'all out. I'm, call I'm not trying to be mean to pick on you. I'm trying to see, okay, did they learn? Did they catch on? Do they got it? Oops. Here's another practice problem for you to work on and do as well. Okay, I'm going to pause there and um, get the videos up at this point up online for y'all. I will definitely come back and video some more because I need to get through these notes with you here. And then we're going to talk about as much as we can in class with each other. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.